Autodesk Constructor is a web-based application, meaning your users can access it regardless of where they are as long as they have a connection to the Internet. Each user has a username and password, and based on these login credentials, the system understands what their role is and what projects they're working on. It then tailors the information that they can see and what they can do to that information based on who they are and what role they play. Once a user logs in, the first thing they see is the Constructor desktop. Our clients often tell us that they get 50% or more of their work done on a day-to-day -day basis in Constructware just working off of the Today page and the Dashboard page of this desktop. These are the areas in the application where everything surfaces that's calling for their attention. So as an example, when we look at the Today page, the first area we'll notice is the Routing Action Required area. This is where anything that has been routed to you in our workflow engine and is in your court is going to surface. So in this example, you can see that I have two contract change orders that have been routed to me for approval in the amounts of $7,900 and $11,300. I also have a CAD drawing that's been routed to me for approval as well and a purchase order that needs approving. All of these documents are in my court, and I could simply take action on them right from the screen. So as an example, if I look at this first floor plan CAD drawing, it takes me to a screen where I can see who else has the ball in court, I could uh, go ahead and mark that as approved, and I can also look at the information such as the drawing to make sure I know what I'm approving. In this case, I'm now looking at information about that file, where it lives, what version I'm looking at, etc., and I have the ability to go ahead and view that CAD drawing directly inside of the constructor application. Once this loads, you'll see that I have noticed in the upper left-hand corner that there are markups that exist for this file. So I can go ahead and open that for review, overlay the markups from other users, and make sure that I see the entire picture before I mark this as approved. Now that I've seen it and it looks good, I'll close this window, and I'm going to go ahead and mark this document as approved. You'll see immediately this will refresh my dashboard screen, and I will have one less item that's calling for my action. The next area is the messages area. In this area, all system messages notifying me of things that are calling for my attention are highlighted. So an RFI that's been submitted, a daily report, files being added, etc. These messages were all sent to my normal email inbox. So I not, do not need to come into Constructware to check them. However, if you're like me, typically you get a lot of emails and they get flushed down to the bottom of your inbox. Instead of having to go back and look at what you were notified about, when you do log into Constructware, all of those messages are summarized for you. You can go ahead and click on them and take action right from here. You then have the tasks. These tasks could be assigned to yourself, they could be assigned by other users, or they could be a derivative out of our meetings module. In the meetings module, you can create a meeting agenda, process that into the meetings minutes, and then in the minutes you can assign the action items out to individual users. Each of those action items would show up on those users' dashboards as tasks they could go ahead and take action on those tasks again right from this today screen. And lastly, we have the auto reports. Constructor is a relational database for tracking your project, so all of your project information is stored in that database. The real power of that is in the ability to record, or to report rather, on all that information. We have over 200 reports available right out of the box, as well as a custom report writer. You can also schedule reports to run automatically and surface here on your dashboard. Those reports could be set to surface on your own, or they could be set to surface on another user. So for example, if your boss required a specific report every Monday morning, you could simply schedule it to run and go to his dashboard on Monday mornings. You can then launch those reports directly from this screen with a single click. Just as an example, I'm pulling up the cost to complete report, which is a summary ledger of all the information that's being tracked in my uh, cost management area of the application. We'll get more into this in a later demonstration, but to give you an idea, on the left-hand side, you have all the budget information for your project, your original budget, any adjustments or approved changes to that, and any pending changes. So if there's a change order out there that's going to affect the budget on your project, if it has not been approved but it's going through a approval workflow, you'd have visibility to it here in the pending column. On the right-hand side of the report, you have your cost information. It starts with your original commitments in the forms of purchase orders and contracts, and then any approved revisions to those commitments, perhaps those are contract change orders or purchase order change orders, totaling up to your current commitments and overall giving you your project over under where you are in total for that project. 
This is a real-time report that is constantly updated based on exactly what is happening in your project, what's been approved, etc. The next tab is the dashboard. This is where you can get a visual representation of what's happening in the different processes on your, on your project. You can look at this on a single project or you can look at it on your set of projects. So for instance, me as a project manager, I manage these four projects here and when I look across those for all projects, it shows me just data for those four projects. I have over 100 different charts I can choose from to build multiple pages of these dashboards so I can cut and slice the data in many different ways. As an example, we'll look at overdue unresolved RFIs. I can see here that I have 14 overdue unresolved RFIs that have no response received across my projects. That's of a concern, so I'll drill into that and I can see how that breaks down across the four projects. I notice that Green Palm's development is particularly bad with 10 of those items that are uh, not responded to. So I can drill into that and get a list of the specific RFIs that have not received a response. So in three clicks, we've gone from 50,000 feet, looking across all four projects, down to a list of specific RFIs that need action. I can then use our Take Action button and view that document directly from this screen. Now that I've reviewed this RFI, I see that something's not right. I need to send this to the attention of one of the responders to make sure that we get a response on this ASAP. So I can actually send that directly from here to any user in the system and notify them that they need to jump on this and get, keep things moving in an expeditious way. Now that's a high level overview of today in the dashboard tab. Again, these are very powerful places in the constructor application because everything that calls for your attention or that is surfacing up in, a, in an alert manner will come here on these two tabs. But the meat of the application lives over here in the menu. This menu completely changes depending on who you are and what rights you have. So for instance, someone, uh, an architect may not even see the cost management area. But depending on your rights, you'll see different areas. The four major areas we want to highlight is bid management, where you can manage your entire bid process, solicit your vendors to bid, and then take your bid responses in a matrix, compare them side by side, and then once you've awarded it, you can process that bid response right into the contract with that vendor. You then have the file management area where you can build a folder structure for each project that is custom to that project where you can store any type of document and choose who to share it with. So these could be CAD drawings like we're looking at here. They could be photos, specifications, Word documents, whatever it might be. You then have the document management area where we store all the construction documents for your project. RFIs, submittals, transmittals, daily reports, ASIs, etc. And then lastly, you have the cost management area. At the heart of this is your budget, where you're tracking the budget for your project. And then against that, you're writing commitments in forms of contracts and purchase orders, and you're managing contract change orders and purchase order change orders, and even the processing of invoices. We'll get into the details of these four different areas, bid management, file management, document management, and cost management at another time. But this should give you a high-level overview of the power of Constructware and how it can manage your project from end to end.